Every Super Smash Bros. game has a modding scene, no matter how big or how small the game may be. We have plenty of costume mod packs for more modern games, there's Smash Remix for the first title, and everyone knows about Project M. But one game proved to be the hardest to crack, Super Smash Bros. Melee. For some reason, this game was the last one to be solved, and the funniest part was that it probably didn't need to be. Melee has been hacked and modded for years, but the goals of the game's player base were just different from other games. The other Smash games wanted to add cosmetics, or new stages, or new mechanics, or just straight up new characters. But Melee scene is special because they've always focused on how competitive that game can be, and with how difficult the game is to master with all of its advanced techniques, the efforts of modders instead went to making tools to help players practice or get better at the game. Now this isn't to say that the other types of mods were never made, as there were a handful of packs made to spice up Melee's gameplay. Melee SD Remix set out to balance Melee a bit. Stronger characters received nerfs to their movesets, while weaker characters were improved in small ways, done to increase the viable character pool rather than the usual faces. Silly Melee is another, and the goal of it was literally to make the game as silly as possible. And then there's Super Smash Bros. Melee 64, which sets out to make the game similar to Smash 64 in both appearance and mechanics. If Melee wasn't such a technical game with a high skill floor, it's likely we would have seen more cosmetics or stages or characters modded into the game much, much sooner. This is why the first mod pack to do that was such a big deal. On January 20th, 2021, a YouTube channel named Team Akanea uploaded their debut release trailer for the mod pack that they dubbed the Akanea Build. This name was based off of the scrap stage for Melee, titled Akanea, a stage intended to be the home stage for the Fire Emblem reps. The trailer starts out showing off a bunch of new costumes and cosmetics for the cast of Melee. New recolors for many of the characters, and characters like Pikachu and Jigglypuff received all new hats as well. The trailer then transitions into showing off new stages, or rather, old stages. Every single old Smash 64 stage that didn't make it in the jump to Melee now returns, and they are back in their full glory. Peach's Castle features a working bumper. Hyrule Castle has the annoying little twisters that launch you up into the air. Saffron City actually has functioning Pokemon, which is amazing. Planet Zebes has the rising acid that the original had. And best of all, Mushroom Kingdom has functioning warp pipes that can take you all over the stage. I mean, really, no stone is left unturned in these stages. It's really fantastic. And just for good measure, they also brought over Metal Cavern, which doesn't have any kind of fun gimmick with it, but it's really nice to see it in Melee as well. The trailer also has some fun additions that we'll talk about in a minute, but it ends off on a really high note, with a screen showing that a new foe is in development, with the silhouette of who is clearly Wolf O'Donnell. So this is a huge deal, because prior to this, there hadn't really been any notable creations of all new characters for Melee. It had mostly just been reworks of pre-existing characters. Despite the trailer's ending sort of implying the character would be available at a later date, you could play the character right away. Alongside the official Akanea build, they posted an experimental build over on the GitHub that allowed you to try out the character, though with the caveat that anything could change and that the playable wolf didn't really reflect a finalized character. Some small bug fixes and game mode adjustments were dropped over the course of the year, but nothing too major was updated for the build until Christmas Day 2021. Another new trailer dropped, this time for version 0.8 of the Akanea build. And this trailer revealed... Bonus character! Bonus, bonus character! That's right, not just Wolf was added, but Charizard and Diddy Kong too. Yeah, I guess they just don't have any narrator lines they can use for these characters, so rather than making ones that don't match, they just went with... Bonus character! Which is funny, so, you know, it gets a pass. So first, let's talk the official Wolf reveal. This version of Wolf is naturally built around the era that Melee released in, so he's inspired by Wolf's look in Star Fox 64 and his brief appearance in the opening to Melee, with creative liberties taken wherever necessary. This version of Wolf largely plays as you'd expect, with most of his moveset being inspired by his appearances in Brawl, Ultimate, and Project M. In this mod, he's naturally built off a of fox, so you'll see plenty of similarities in some of their attributes, which makes sense. I've always said that for many of these mod packs that want to add characters, it's way easier to start with a clone character to get your feet wet, and then you can start adding in whole new characters once you're comfortable, and that's clearly what they did. Some of the move attributes are adjusted to make more sense in Melee's environment. His shine can naturally be used offensively, 
like with Fox and Falco, rather than merely to reflect objects like in later releases. Some of his moves are more like Fox's, like Up Smash or Neutral Air, but playing this character, you definitely are going to feel like you are playing Wolf, rather than Fox, but you know, with a wolf laser or something. The next character they revealed in the trailer was Charizard. This take on the character is most like Charizard's moveset in Smash for 3DS and Wii U, since that was really his only official appearance as a solo character. Naturally, he's got his Fire Breath, he also has Fly for his Up Special, and then he has Rock Smash for his Down Special, and even Flare Blitz, though surprisingly, he doesn't really deal any self-damage when using this move. Some of his normal moves also come from Brawl, but to me it really feels like you are largely playing Smash 4 Charizard inside of Melee, but not horrendously slow. And the final new character added is Diddy Kong. I don't really have much to say here, this is just straight up Diddy Kong from pretty much any of the Smash games, since I feel like Diddy really hasn't changed too much across the whole Smash library. One interesting thing about Diddy though is his banana peel. Since Melee doesn't have any kind of trip mechanic, opponents hit by the peel can't enter that weird trip state where they stop and think about all their life choices. Instead, they fall down completely as though they'd missed a tech just like any other move in the game. One thing I have to say about these characters is they just feel right. Maybe it's because their movesets are official ones adapted for Melee, but none of these characters feel out of place. Too often, modded characters go for the flash or the flare just to prove what can be done with mods, that they often overshoot and the character no longer really feels like it belongs in Smash. But if I time traveled back to 2001 and showed people this mod pack, I don't think any of them would bat an eye other than being surprised that there were characters they didn't know were in the game. And it's also the fact that they just look so right in Melee too. They all perfectly match the style of the game, from their models to their renders and stock icons. Charizard, you can maybe argue, is so good because he has both a trophy and is a Pokeball assist in the game, but both Wolf and Diddy have no meaningful presence in the game. It's just so good, I, I can't get over how well these characters just fit in with Melee. And now we can finally talk about those silly little game modes. Back in the first public build for Akanea, the new game mode Volleyball was included, which is just so much fun. It's literally volleyball with a totally custom stage and ball mechanic. You use your attacks to launch the ball, and if it touches the ground on either side of the net, the opposing side gets a point. It's honestly really fun to figure out how the ball interacts with moves and how you can trip up your opponent. They also introduce tag, where one player is it with an arrow over their head, and if they don't land a move on another player in time, they will explode and lose their stock. And no, I already tried it, lasers don't count. Next up we have Turbo Melee, which fans of Project M will recognize as similar to their Turbo Mode. This mode allows you to cancel any successful attack into another attack immediately, without the need to wait for cooldown. I am absolutely horrible at this. My brain just doesn't click with this gameplay, but I always love seeing the DBZ style combos people make with this mode, so it's super welcome. And lastly, we have All Star Versus, which in name and concept will be a little familiar to both Project M and Smash Ultimate players. This mode allows you to set up a roster of characters in an order of your choosing, and then play against your opponent's roster. This seems to have been designed with Iron Man's in mind, where both players use every character to see who can win. But really, you can play this any way you'd like, you know, 200 Marios against a single Ganondorf just to give your little cousin a fighting chance. And that's pretty much everything Akanea build currently offers. The big focus on this pack was to simply add content. Nothing gets replaced, nothing gets changed, it's purely new characters, new stages, with everything else remaining completely untouched. There is an offshoot of this pack, however, which does not follow this philosophy. From everything I'm able to see, this other pack was actually built off of early Akanea build versions, but it became its own project. The pack is called Beyond Melee. The first reveal of Beyond Melee showed off a ton of stuff. Brand new stages, new mechanics, and most importantly, five new characters. These characters are Shadow Mewtwo, Raichu, Fei, Skull Kid, and Wolf. However, mechanically, Wolf is essentially Akanea Builds Wolf, Beyond Melee simply gave him their own version of Smash Ultimate's model. Later on, two more characters were revealed for the mod, Meta Knight and Sonic the Hedgehog. Remember how I said Akaneas felt like simple extensions of Melee, like you wouldn't even really guess that these were modded characters? Beyond Melee goes the opposite direction and shows what you can really do with these mods. Faye, a character from the previously scrapped Star Fox 2, has a mechanic where she can switch between a quick, weaker blaster or a strong but slower sniper blast. 
Skull Kid is slippery, with teleports on a bunch of his moves and the ability to drop a shadow orb that can be remotely activated anywhere. Shadow Mewtwo has a meter that allows him to briefly transform into Mega Shadow Mewtwo X, doing higher damage and knockback. Raichu has moves inspired by both Pikachu and Pichu, but are different enough that they'd make sense on a different character. It really does feel like the evolution of Pichu and Pikachu's movesets. Wolf is, like I said, just Akanea Wolf. And lastly, we have both Meta Knight and Sonic. These two are probably the closest to their official Smash appearances, but Beyond Melee has also made some adjustments in order to make them not full-on copies. They also changed up every vanilla character that's available in the build. Some are minor tweaks like changing hitboxes or damage and knockback trajectories. And some are literally giving Pichu a shine and making him absolutely busted. This pack clearly has a totally different goal when it comes to melee modding. While Akanea leaves everything vanilla totally untouched and just adds things to the game, Beyond Melee basically does the opposite and sees just how much they can get away with. It's a bit of a mixed bag, and I can see arguments for both options. Honestly, it really just boils down to what you like in your Smash mods. Personally, I found both pretty fun in their own right. Some of the changes and new characters in Beyond Melee make the game more chaotic and fun to goof around in while Akanea build lets me mostly just play melee just with a few extra additions. It'll be truly amazing to see what each of these mods can accomplish over the next couple of years. The Brawl modding scene exploded with custom characters once it was possible, and I just know that the melee modding scene is going to do exactly the same thing. If you're interested in either of these mods, I've left links to their download pages in the description so that you can try them out if you'd like. And that is going to do it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.